What is going on, friends? Sean Don coming back with another technical analysis this fine Wednesday morning. Here we have Jake Meyer, Tacos Eat Tacos, the TikTok sensation, helping out the throwing world by publicizing the lovely athletes in our sport. So, love to see your videos on TikTok, Jake. So, yeah. <clears throat> Before we get into today's video, if you guys are interested, go to my website, gripandrip.co, for all of my online coaching services. You can get yourself an in-depth technical analysis just like this. You can get yourself some throws, programming, lifting programming, whatever you might be interested in. I'm here to help you guys reach your goals. Coaching lately has been picking up, and it's pretty dope to see everybody setting some fat PR to indoor season. It's freaking sweet, dude. I'm stoked about it. So... Yeah, check out my website, gripandrip.co. If you have any questions, hit me up on the contact page or shoot me a message on Instagram at sdthrows. All right, so let's get into today's video. Let's take a look at Jake's throw, first and foremost. <clears throat> I think he's got the, uh, what are those, the, what are they called? The Tech Leap throwing shoes? I don't know, but fascinating. Um, yeah, he says he's doing kind of like a Brocky or kind of static start here. Or not, uh, sorry, not static, stagger, stagger. So, uh, I'll take a couple looks at the uh, views. And uh, get to it. First thing I see is the orbit is very um, right sided, not a bad thing. Right sided meaning low around the left, high around, low around the right, high around the left. But then it kind of fixes itself a little bit. We shall see. Or say the orbit shifts a little bit, so that means just there's a little general disconnection um, as the throw goes on. But also, this is filmed from what looks like um, you know floor level. Uh, it makes it a little uh, more dramatic than usual, at least in terms of when it comes to looking at the orbit. It looks a little steeper than it might be if you were filming at like let's say like chest height. So not bad, not bad. All right, let's break it down. All right, no more rambling, even though I'm rambling is literally what I do. Um, so, Brock Eager, static start, left foot, I assume at zero, maybe, you know, it's hard to tell exactly. Um, or I guess maybe if you're trying to throw straight out into the sector, um, it's hard to tell exactly. But you can just see that right foot's back a little bit from the left, which is, I think, advantageous or has its advantages, I guess. As you said, Brock Eager does it as well. Um, so he's been throwing pretty well lately. He's been looking pretty good from all the stuff I've seen. But, um, first and foremost, this preliminary swing here, you bring the ball forwards. All right. It's nice and chill. It's not too high. I see some people go really crazy and bring it really high up and then it swings really high behind them, drops really, I guess, steep down behind them. Um, pretty chill here though, but you bring the ball forwards and then you bring the ball straight backwards i just did another technical analysis before this video where this is kind of the same issue that the previous athlete had where ball comes forwards and then ball goes straight backwards and you can see it's really just straight pure pendulum motion here up and down front to back not much rotational um <clears throat> you see you do get the hands out a little bit here but i would like to see a little bit more rotation um in the ball movement in this preliminary swing so uh, not even it doesn't have to be rotational in the sense of like right to left but i just need to see it wider out to the right side um like i said the ball is just a little bit close to the left leg here sorry right leg uh, my brain scrambled this morning but um yeah just a little tight to the body here so get the hands out away from the body maybe get a little more rotational if you do look at brock eagers though he is very rotational the ball has a lot of rotational movement in uh, his winds and entry, he gets the ball very wide to the right, wide to the left, and it's very circular, very wide orbit, because right here, like I said, it's just a small orbit. Um, and you want to set up the winds to be as similar to the throw as possible, I think, uh, or at least strive for it. So bigger orbit, longer orbit, better orbit in the winds means bigger, longer, better orbit in the turns and the throw. So if you start small, uh, it's going to kind of um, work itself out through the throw, but it's not always the most ideal. So ball a little bit wider to the right. And then as you see, you are reaching a little bit. And then you can see first movement as you go to start the ball forwards is across tight to the body. So you are trying to get that rotational movement. But what I would rather see is, like I said, uh, as the ball comes back, 
reach the hands out to the right. And then I want you to think about just bringing the hands straight forwards, kind of tangentially, I guess, if that's the right word. But from here, keep the hands out away from the body and bring the ball forwards kind of along the line of that my mouse is draw, drawing, like towards the camera, forward towards the camera, forwards from 270 instead of across from right to left. Okay. Uh, that will or widen the orbit, allow the ball to catch up a little bit more because as you can see, as you go across, the ball doesn't really catch up until about there with your hands in your upper body. So um, <clears throat> forward from 270, not across, all right? That'll make the orbit a little longer, feel a little more tension, get a little bit more centripetal force, centripetal acceleration going on in the throw. Um, but then, yeah, as you go through doubles, or sorry, this first wind, we're five minutes in and I'm still on the preliminary swings. Just goes to show how important the entry and setup of the throw is. Um, but yeah, you bring the ball across, arms a little tight to the body. So always try to think about reaching the arms away from the body a little bit more. I'm not sure. Just kind of looking at how you're gripping your glove. Uh, I suggest using some Throw Bros toss and sauce or some chalk or something, to, a little grip agent to uh, help your grip. If you're into that sort of thing, it allows you to relax the arms a little bit more and feel way more tension from the hammer. You get a longer orbit. Longer orbit means easier, farther throws, better connection, just better technique in general. So just food for thought there. Um, but hands out away from the body. And then as you do go into the second wind, <coughs> you're opening up pretty well, at least in terms of the shoulders and the hips. With that stagger start, that's the advantage there. You're able to open up and connect a little bit earlier. But the bad thing is, with the ball not having a ton of centripetal force, rotational force out away from the body um, in this swing, you can see the ball comes, uh, I should say, drops, and then it comes up. And then in this wind, you can see the ball is up relative uh, to the hands and the body. So if I were to draw a line <clears throat> from the hands parallel with the horizon, I would like to see the ball kind of in this line or, or parallel to the ground where you can see it's up. It's too high. Some people see it's too low. That means they also don't have tension in a different way. This is not having tension in uh, another way. That's also, I just don't think, the most advantageous uh, ball is up. Uh, which means it's probably going to come crashing down on you uh, as you open up. And then, yeah, ball's really high there. It's going to drop pretty low. You're pretty patient with it, opening up the shoulders. But you can see it's just the hands drop down towards the hips. And I, th I think it should be the same thing. Like I said, I think Brock does a lot of things pretty well where he keeps the, the winds a little bit flatter. His entry's pretty flat, and his hands <clears throat> really reach out wide to the right. Another person, if you look at um, at least like Rudy Winkler uh, in his entry, he really, it looks like he kind of casts his hands out very wide to the right and sets up a very good right side of his orbit and entry. And if I've learned anything throw, anything in the throw, um, it's that whatever happens on the right side of the throw affects what happens on the left side. It's kind of like a mirror. Uh, so wider to the right means wider to the left. Uh, and if it drops around the right, it's going to rise around the left. It's going to do the opposite. So <clears throat> ball drops a little bit, hands come down a little bit. And then going into the final wind, uh, you can see that, let's see, same sort of thing, balls up. Like I said, if we want that parallel horizon line through the wire, um, it's just a little bit too steep on you. And then what happens is, again, like I said, from 180, as the ball passes through 180, like right around here, I should say, right, I guess that's even 90, but uh, you want to think about reaching back with your right arm and having like a really long sweep, really long wide push around the right really keeping the hands out. I like to think about, uh, there's two ways to think about it, keeping the ball up at like, let's say like chest height, which is a little bit harder, but uh, a lot easier for some people is to think about the hands. So hands, keeping the hands up at like chest height, sternum height. Uh, Cause like I said, you have the tendency to kind of drop the ball, drop the hands down. So it gets to about waist level, belly button level. So you want to keep the hands up and out wide to the right a little bit. Um, with the ball dropping, we're almost 10 minutes in and I haven't even gotten through the first turn. Um, but with the ball dropping a little bit, you're setting up entry pretty well. You are getting, uh, some width in the orbit. Finally, um, you can see that left arm coming across the body, which is fine. That right leg looks a little too, well, you can maybe widen your base up a little bit as well. Um, maybe in this second wind, do it instead of a step up, because like you see, you're doing a stagger start, do a little step out, just a little tiny step out with that right leg. So just a little boom, we'll step out there and then 
step out there because you can see you have the tendency you want to kind of do it but that right foot is just fixed so a little step out and then um, that'll help find some stability in this right side a little bit better better stability in the right side means better stability in the left side because as the ball goes through zero pretty good stable left side so I take back what I said, but maybe a little wider base still might help. You get down the legs a little bit more. They look a little, you look like a taller guy, at least once again, camera angle. Um, it's hard to tell, but you look like a taller guy, legs longer. Uh, so trying to emphasize being a little deeper in the legs, as I just said in the previous video, the lower body is like a suspension uh, in the throw uh, for the most part. So, you know, if you're driving in a car and you got really stiff legs, you're going to have a really stiff suspension in, in your car, essentially. It's going to be a bumpy ride. So a little softer in the legs. Uh, you still want some tension, but don't want to be totally stiff um, but as the ball goes through zero left side's pretty stable um, you can see the balls starting to go or I should say the body the left side and the ball starting to go left and it looks like that right side's just a little bit behind everything it doesn't really start turning until the ball passes zero but even from there you can see it's mostly that left side reaching all right so your direction is just a little bit off here because of the stagger start that's one disadvantage to the stagger start is that it kind of you're purposely setting up your direction to kind of lead you down what would be the right sector line which isn't a bad thing but you just got to be aware of it um especially with this orbit low point right about here ish and then that means the high point is going to be almost 180 degrees opposite of that and you can see like I said, that right side just a little bit behind in terms of everything else and it's just very steep around the left as you can see the hands are up uh hands are kind of like head height here um this angle from let's say the body through the arms you don't really want that to be greater than 90 degrees so if your hands are up here that means your hip should be more forwards underneath you your left knee could be out a little bit more uh, your toe could be up a little bit more because what happens is you do what i've seen quite a few people do lately where like this left side kind of opens up and reaches and you're kind of reaching with that left toe and then you put it down almost prematurely so you never really quite finish the turn um like i said if you're you want to throw out into the sector uh your direction is kind of leading down kind of where that left toe points for the most part and then from there you're doing what you can to get around like you know you want to throw down 180 the body knows it wants to go down 180 out into the sector but if this left toe comes down early it kind of throws things off and you can see get that left toe down early it's kind of pointing towards 90 instead of pointing more towards the direction of the sector and then you kind of spin out as i call it or kind of like you get pulled around the left so you see your hips kind of shift over there and then you're pretty patient in double support or single support but this right side is just a little bit behind just a little bit could be a little bit more active with that right leg turning with a little bit more and then like i said just a little steep in the hands you got to or flatten out the orbit flatten out that first turn and then find a good first catch um because here good direction to the sector good separation but this right leg is just a little stiff um, and your left knee is also a little stiff as you can see there's really not much forward horizontal translation across the circle um, that left knee is just pretty stiff you're just very rotational through the body um, and then you land and your right leg and it doesn't have much shin angle you do land heel first which is not a bad thing but i do think um, uh, this negative shin angle we'll see what happens but uh, I do like to see first turn, heel turn, heel catch is fine. Um, but with his right foot being a little bit out, um, kind of far away from the body, a little wide, uh, it's like a falling reaction. You know, your body's like, oh, we're kind of off balance. We're going to put our foot down so we feel balance. Uh, and then it kind of can just lead to some negative things later in the throw. But ball's very steep around the left. You catch, ball drops. And then from there, you can see a little tension in the arms happening. Arms get a little tight. Yeah, I hope you see that. I see it, especially in that left arm. If that left arm tightens up, like I said, shorter orbit means worse connection, means shorter throws, even with higher effort. Um, but as you catch, like I said, with this right, wide right leg and then the heel catch, this is kind of what I'm talking about, where it's not the most. Um, if you do land on that right heel, you really got to emphasize, overemphasize turning that right leg. Um, then as you go through double support, you see this left side opening up right here and the right side not turning with it. it kind of, there's a little disconnection in here. And then same sort of thing, arms get tight. You're kind of lifting around the left, hands kind of up above the head now, 
getting very steep. And same sort of thing, this left side kind of reaches, toe comes down a little early, and then you kind of get pulled around the left a little bit. And you can see as the throw goes on, when I watch it in full speed, you do travel down the right sector. So um, if you are doing the stagger start, go for it, but just got to be aware of what's happening. Um, and got to still keep that kind of idea of direction to 180, that pendulum, that linear motion. Uh, like I said, and then it, it is a little steep going through single support, and then as you catch, the ball starts to drop before you even get that foot down. So you land with a little less separation here, uh, a little stiffer. It looks like you're standing almost straight up and down in the legs. <clears throat> um, same sort of thing, landing on that heel. Not much tension here in this catch position. Um, so then what probably is going to happen is that left side is going to pull more. Um, but that left heel grounds before zero, which is good. And then you can see that left arm get a little tighter, guiding the ball a little bit. Same sort of thing, left side, left foot kind of leads, flops open, right side's a little bit behind. Toe comes down a little early. Maybe work on some uh, ankle flexibility, some ankle mobility stuff. Uh, so you can keep that left toe up a little bit longer. And then right side does get into it. But then same thing, hands up above the head here, um, getting pulled around the left again. And then you see, especially if you look at this left foot here, a little slide, a little slide there. Um, getting pulled around the left, you catch, stiffen the legs again. Um, and then you catch, just probably about 270. Once again, not much tension here. Stiffen that right leg, heel coming down, negative kind of shin angle. You want to be on the ball of the foot. Like I said, first turn heel catch cool, but like the other turns after that should be on the, the ball of the foot. Um, and then as you go through zero, more tension in that left arm. You're not really pulling that left shoulder back a ton. There's just tension in that left side. Too much tension in that left side, kind of taking over the right side. Um, and then now you start to get that left toe up finally a little bit more, but that right foot still not quite turning with it. You're starting to, like I said, you're traveling down the right sector line in terms of where the body's going and then with this left side tension you do kind of start to pull back a little bit hands get up a little bit it looks like you start to lose posture so you're kind of getting pulled out the ball is kind of reaching towards the left sector line but the hips are kind of sinking down and back like so you're just kind of getting pulled around the left the whole throw and then you catch and it looks like your legs straighten out a little bit more here landing kind of flat footed balls up and then <clears throat> as you go through the finish, like I said, your body can feel, like I said, if you're trying to throw down straight into the sector, your body's moving down the whole right side, right right sector line of, of the, the throw. Um, body's moving down the right sector line. Um, your body recognizes what's going on kind of subconsciously, I think, to an extent, or maybe consciously if you're into that sort of thing. Um, and so you get to this catch, you get to the finish, and you're like, all right, my body knows I'm going on the right sector line. I need to throw out into the sector. So then the left side pulls, shortens to try to get the ball out into the sector, which is exactly what happens. So, yeah, um, another long-ass technical analysis video. <clears throat> Lots of rambling. My voice is not doing well this morning. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, it all kind of comes back to the start, like I said, getting a better start. Uh, if you're a fan of Brock Eager, then try to emulate his winds a little bit more, get the ball up and out, a little flatter, a little more rotational. Uh, and then, like I said, fix some of this lower body stuff, clean up a little bit. Um, the biggest thing that I see uh, is the orbit. Like I said, low point around the left, high point or low point around the right, high point around the left. You got to even it out a little bit. Um, as the throw goes on, <clears throat> you do want the low point to kind of shift more towards zero, which it does. It's just a little bit late. Um, and it's just steep. I think the biggest thing is that it's just steep. It's too steep around the left and too low around the right. So you got to kind of even that out a little bit. So we're going on 20 minutes here, so, uh, we're going to cut it, but, um, yeah, hopefully this helps Jake. Let me know if you have any questions. If you want to do a TikTok promoting my services, that'd be dope, but also you don't have to, I'm just, you know, shooting the shit, but, um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. If anybody else out there is still watching this video and you then you should probably go to my website, gripandrip.co, and sign up for some online coaching services. All right, do it now, okay? Indoor season's almost damn near over. It's at least half over, and then outdoor season is coming. So if you want to make some big technical changes, you got to get on it now. So thank you for watching. Until next time, Sean Don signing off.